Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, Director of Vision Health. And today I'm going to be speaking about autoimmunity in COVID-19. And why am I doing that? Because a very important piece of work has just come out quite recently with regards to um, how important this is to understanding the disease. So here we have the picture of a post that I did Guess when that I did this post? Could autoimmunity against ACE2 be the cause of COVID-19 mortality? That was done in April 2020. The first documentation of the theory of autoimmunity. Now, I'm highlighting this because one of the strange things about science is that they tend not to give credit to these first thoughts. I'm making sure that no one forgets that I thought about this at that time. And even at that time, I'd shared this paper, which I'll share a little bit more with you. It was a short um, PDF one page document where I captured my thoughts with regards to the idea. So that's April 2020. It was the first time I had this breakthrough thought about could autoimmunity against ACE2 be the cause of COVID-19 mortality? And why am I highlighting that? It's largely because of a paper that has come out quite recently. And I'm just going to quickly share this screen so that you will be able to see it if I can uh, find it. Yep, there we go. So this paper came out in PLOS One, and it's the development of ACE2 autoantibodies after SARS-CoV-2 infection. When was it published? Uh, it was published on the 3rd of September. I don't know if you can see it right here. 3rd of September, 2021. Authors are largely from Arkansas, and they have done a good bit of work here that I'm going to try and highlight to help people to understand a little bit more about the concept. So here we are, could autoimmunity against ACE2 be the cause of COVID-19 mortality? Why is that so important? It's critical because if we understand this principle, it gives us the opportunity to do therapy that can save lives. And so this is the large reason why steroids work in COVID-19. It's a viral infection, yet the most effective drug is a steroid. And that's primarily because of the principle of an autoimmune response. To make it simple, what that means is that when your body or your immune system is starting to fight an infection, a virus or a bacteria, it normally produces antibodies which target them and makes it easier for the white cells to pick them up. But just imagine that in your body, you produced antibodies that targeted a normal part of your body. That's an autoimmune disease. And I, I guess a good example of one would be something like psoriasis, where you can see the rash on the skin. That area of skin is damaged by the own bodies attacking it, and therefore it responds to steroids, which suppresses the immune system. So that's the basis of an autoimmune disease. And I guess part of the question is, why would this occur in COVID-19? Based on the research that had been done before, it essentially is the autoimmune response to serum ACE2. I can't go into the details of it right now. And if you look at some of my previous videos in terms of autoimmunity, you will see a better understanding of it right here on uh, Vision Health, which could be on YouTube or on Facebook. So let's get a little bit more thoughts about what it was that we thought at that time. In effect, the theory of autoimmunity literally popped into my head. And uh, let me just get myself out of the way here. Um, and so what we have here is that the thought was that the COVID-19, this was in April 2020, was a challenge for health services across the world. We had limited treatment options. And I was saying that the disease was unusual in that the initial presentation of cough and fever predates the respiratory and gastrointestinal symptoms. And I said, quite critically, this suggests that the viral infection is not the primary driver 
of symptoms. And researchers demonstrated that COVID-19 binds to specific ACE2 receptor related to blood pressure and inflammation. And critically, if you go down here, the combination of the coronavirus and soluble ACE2 receptor would appear antigenic to the immune system and trigger an immune response. And that was the essence of the idea that I had at that time with regards to an autoimmune response. At that time, I'd used <clears throat> two references. One of them was detection of soluble angiotensin converting enzyme two in heart failure. And the other one was autoantibodies in connective tissue diseases. So it wasn't an abnormal thing. It just didn't necessarily happen that often. But that was the principle that I had gone into. So what did the research show us with regards to understanding this principle? When we look at the paper that had been done, this is the image that I want you to concentrate on. Let's get a little bit closer. Where you have the yellow dots, that's down here. I'll try and see if I can use my pointer uh, for you to see a little bit better. So where you see the yellow dots here, these are outpatients who didn't have COVID-19. The blue dots are outpatients who did. And when they say outpatients, that means they didn't get severe disease. And so they could be managed at home and didn't need to come into hospital. Then you have inpatients and those are green. And if you see scattered around here, you have lots of green dots in this section and a critically convalescent who had COVID-19. That means that they are having symptoms beyond the infection. The red and the green dots in this area here represents antibody levels that are elevated. This is the group here who are producing autoantibodies. As you can see, they are the convalescent group and the inpatient group. The outpatients who had it and the outpatients who didn't have it tend to fall in this area here where their antibody levels are not particularly elevated. So this is very, very important to demonstrate that all of the autoantibodies occur in the convalescent and inpatient groups. And when we look at this picture here, this was showing again inpatient, outpatient, um, outpatient. You can see here that a total of uh, 41 people were positive for uh, autoantibodies, and that was in the group of inpatients primarily and convalescent. And when you looked at the outpatient groups, these guys here were negative. This is the outpatient um, who had the diagnosis but no ongoing symptoms, and the outpatients who didn't have it at all. They had no autoantibodies. So it was quite significant, this principle of autoimmunity with regards to COVID-19. And this is the point that I was trying to see if I could clarify. So at that time, almost a year ago, that was when I shared it on LinkedIn at the time, and I will quickly share with you the conversation that I had. Here we have me sharing this point about the breakthrough brainstorm about COVID-19 in the short paper. And as we go down, we have here, this is one guy, Michael, who at the time, it was a novel concept, didn't seem to make much sense to him. He was more focused on the hypoxic and the pulmonary vasoconstriction. And he didn't think that this was necessarily so relevant. And I can understand that. Um, we had a very interesting comment from Patrick Van Hoots here, who has a lab in Ireland, and they were able to measure serum ACE too and autoantibodies to ACE2, which was quite useful. But at the time, I didn't have any samples that I could use that would work with them. And he was quite open to helping with getting some of that work done. So really appreciate the work from Patrick. This was a year ago. Well, more than a year. This was probably about 16 months ago. This here is from Professor Robert Wiseman at Michigan State University. And he recommended that I get in contact with Professor Root Bernstein to talk about this. Why am I highlighting this one? Because this conversation 
led me to Professor Bruce Uhall, who I've been collaborating with now for probably 16 months. We have co-authored two papers, we're working on a third, and we have pushed the idea of autoimmunity in COVID-19, I think, into the mainstream. So it has the potential to completely change the way that we manage this pandemic. And this is why I think that it is very, very relevant to COVID-19 and something that we should definitely be looking uh, for a way forward with. So thank you all very much for spending some time with me. This was just a quick update. Look out for more as I'll be going through quite a lot of these posts that have been going over a year, sharing these ideas about autoimmunity and COVID-19 and critically how it explains some of the symptoms that we see in the disease. Have a great evening and look forward to talking to you again in the near future.